and welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. Thank you guys for tuning in. New videos every Friday. If this is your first time here, I'm a, I'm a garage mechanic with a full-time job who just happens to have a YouTube channel where I work on my truck and try and improve it and make it as good as I can. I've been working on it for years. I've had it for years. I have no formal training. I'm just a hack who, who just uh, blunders through stuff and occasionally gets lucky. But if that sounds like something that's up your alley, go ahead and give me a subscribe, give me a like, and uh, keep coming back. So uh, yeah, today we're getting into the trailer. I haven't shown you guys the trailer or talked much about the trailer for a long time, so that's past due. We need to get into that and I'll tell you how things are holding up, uh, what I like about it, what I might change if I did it in the future. This has been a very popular topic and uh, I think it deserves some attention. Um, I got a really cool trip coming up here in a week or two. We're gonna be towing the trailer up to the Sierras and as such, I'm not gonna have time to get the frame fixed and in the blazer. So I wanted to try and see if I can bend that frame so the trailer doesn't like stink bug going down the road. Now part of it, you're gonna see in the video coming up, the, the truck is really raked. Part of it is just due to having leafs in the back and coils up front. Uh, my ride height is a little bit higher up front and then when you bent the frame that just exacerbates everything and makes it all look wonky. Whatever. It drives great, gets decent mileage, has good power and it tows straight and turns and stops. What more could you ask for? I purchased this two years ago and it has been a very, very awesome trailer for tons of my adventures fits my needs really, really well, and it's probably one, next to what size tire and lift you have, it's probably one of the most uh, asked about uh, aspects of the, my whole channel. So I realized I haven't done an update on this guy in a long time, and that's just because it's just been working. There hasn't been really anything to do to it. So uh, I power washed it for the first time in probably two years yesterday, and uh, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of where it stands and what I would do differently if I was building it over again today. Um, I do have some stuff I'm gonna be doing to it. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I figured I'd just give you guys a walk around and show you how awesome this trailer is. Okay, so there it is. This is an M1101, gross weight maximum 3,400 payload. You can carry a ton. So that's pretty cool. Date of delivery, uh, October of 2008 so this thing's 10 years old it is the aluminum version um, it's got the torsion bar rear suspension which is really cool so there's basically just a giant torsion bar within that axle tube that uh, gets the axle tube up out of the way and helps with the suspension it also comes with a surge brake which is awesome essentially this guy as there's braking you can see the witness marks on it from where it travels it slides into the hitch and gives me braking when i need it comes with these sweet little levelers that i can put on to get it all level and obviously i added that box and the cage and painted everything so this was one of the big questions i get a lot how is the U-Pole Raptor holding up? And I gotta say, absolutely amazing. Now listen, I, I didn't have huge high hopes for this U-Pole Raptor because it cost me like 200 bucks or something to spray the entire bed and rails of the trailer. I can't expect it to fade or to trap dirt or to peel off or to chip or to not have any texture. I didn't expect it to have all of the things I was looking for. Durability, good coverage, decent texture, uh, resistance to UV, uh, ability to be cleaned. This stuff is fantastic. Now, it's probably not gonna be as robust as like uh, some of the spray on liners you can get professionally done, but it was $200, or I think it was actually less than that. I've got it all linked down below in my Amazon store. I'm gonna throw up a direct link to the kit I purchased because uh, I ran it with my Craftsman, you know, 15 gallon, um, air compressor and everything else came from Amazon and it worked wonderfully. So you can see here moving into the bed, I mean this has been carrying wood, all our camping gear, rocks, you name it. It's, it's acted as a trailer for many, many things other than just carrying some uh, camping gear. Now the rails are starting to show a little bit of, of chips here and there, but that honestly it's gonna be right here 
and then round the other side. And that's only because, it's only because I have to grab this guy. I gotta carry this guy in and out of there, and this thing weighs probably 75 pounds. So it is not easy to get it up and over the rail, because the box is generally gonna go down in here where this high lift, where, where this jack stand is. So the box generally lives in here, so I can plug into it. And yeah, once again, you can see the chips along the rail on here, but nothing terrible. Let's take a look at the tailgate. Yeah, this is probably gonna give you the best idea of how, how it's holding up. There you can see, I mean, it's, this is taking a beating. This is what everything gets dragged over. Yeah, let's get you guys some up close. I don't know if you can. There we go. This is probably some of the most worn areas. And it's doing fantastic. So really, really happy with the, the U-Pole Raptor. Stuff is fantastic. Moving on to the stuff that I would have done differently. There's only, there's only one or two things. First of all, I would have used, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a bend in my rack. It's pretty pronounced. This CVT tent weighs about 300 pounds. So it is not a light tent. And so this rack has done perfectly for what I needed it to do. I'm gonna sleeve this. I need to find a piece of tubing that will fit. I need to just sleeve this tubing to make it a little bit stronger. Um, I don't know if you guys remembered from earlier videos. I'll, I'll link down below to um, the rest of the M1101. I'm just gonna call it the, the Humvee trailer from now on. I'm gonna link to the rest of the Humvee trailer videos down below so you can go check those out. Uh, Cause I get into the details of, of where you can find them, how much to pay for them, uh, what to look for and all that. These guys are a hidden gem. They're, they're getting harder and harder to find because people have figured out how awesome they are and they're just snapping them up. But they're freaking fantastic. People are paying eight grand for like an adventure trailer that someone else built for them. Don't pay more than 1500 bucks for one of these. I mean, now that I've said that, they're probably more expensive now, but that's what I paid for mine. Um, yeah, so what I did with the rack that worked really nicely is I added these telescoping, and this is just tube within tube. So there's nothing fancy about it. Um, and I did add these 100 pound gas struts. That is what I would change. They work, they work well. Uh, the problem comes in, the rigidity of the rack is the challenge because you pop one of these pins right here and that corner is going to be driven up by that 100 pound gas strut, leaving the one in the opposite corner under more tension and therefore friction and not moving up as smoothly. What I really want to do, and that's going to be in the cards for uh, when the frame's done and other things are done and the Suburban's done and who knows. I want to put electronic actuators in place of those gas struts. I need to find an actuator that's going to have a throw that's long enough. It needs to be able to uh, extend and deliver for this. But having an electronic actuator that I could just run off of either, uh, I could probably power it straight from the plug on the truck, or I could power it from the, the solar can ammo box that I've got, or, or whatever. But having an actuator that I could just flip a switch and the top would rise? <sighs> That would be freaking awesome. So, but that's that's really all I got. This trailer, this trailer is, is fantastic. It really, really is. I couldn't be happier. It matches the track width of my blazer. So uh, everywhere the blazer goes, this is gonna fit too. You air those tires down and you've got like a massive footprint from the stand. So it toes great on the sand. It doesn't make a whole lot of noise. And despite how flimsy the rack does look, which, I sometimes look at it and I go, really, that's all that's holding it on? It has never budged an inch or given me any problems. So there's the trailer. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I love this thing. I love this thing. Now let's go fix my bent frame and get this guy ready for our trip to uh, the Sierras. I got a bent, bent, a bent frame. You guys have seen it before, but yeah. No real big surprise there. Look at that. And 
We're going camping here in a week or so, and I'm gonna be towing the trailer. So I gotta try and get this bent frame straightened. So today we're gonna head down to my buddy's shop. We're gonna put some eye bolts into his concrete floor. We're gonna chain the truck down on the frame, pull the wheels, tires, and try and jack up at the bumper. See if we can straighten it. I thought I'd throw the trailer on because it is uh, really obvious how bent it is. When the trailer's loaded. Yeah. We gotta get this fixed. Pretty funny. When the axle, when the when the frame got bent the first time, it got center punched by the trailer when we we're coming down that dune. Center punch basically just pile driving, driving it into the ground. So my plan now is to basically put jacks right under the bump stops, right in front of the bump stops on the frame, get it as low as I can, chain it down, and jack it up off the pintle. Um, possibly with one jack, possibly with two jacks, I don't know yet. We'll see what works. But uh, as you can see, if you guys remember from when I, when I bent it, this is, right here is the bend. So came down, hit the bump stops, and then the frame took it. It's hard to really see, but it's in here and also noticeably back there. Ruben's not here, but I wanted to show you this. Work hard, stay focused, be honest, be grateful. Dude, that's pretty legit. That's what he looks at in the morning when he comes here. Awesome. heat up the frame, you know, gas lines, another crap like that. There might be an explosion. So, let's give it a go. If anything's gonna work, this is gonna work. And it's kinda working. We're not 100% sure if it's working how it should be, or if I'm just gonna end up with a really crooked truck. You know what, whatever we get, it's most likely gonna be better than what I have. Safety third. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Oh, okay. It's totally gonna work this time. Maybe. Despite our most valiant efforts, it looks like this frame is not gonna bend back. Not the end of the world. But uh I thought I'd give it a good college try. But as you can see I still got a little bit of a drift going. 
Last chance is gonna try to straighten it using a tie strap off the roll cage to the bumper. We'll see. So it's not perfect, but uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, it's better. It's not fixed yet. We'll get there.